Well, the entire semester has been full of so much activity. The help of God has been available to us on every side. Those two songs we sang at the beginning is to give assurance to someone. Not every student is having a very good time in this exam, and it's obvious. Because the Bible says when men say there's a casting down, he said, I will say there's a lifting up. There are some of us who God has been telling, have been instructing, but somewhat we choose not to listen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and in verse 1, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all that he has commanded thee. When you listen to his command, he sent forth his help. May I ask, how many students here have seen the help of God in the exam? Good. But be that as it may, there are some people who are struggling. With the exams and everything that is happening around them, and maybe possibly some don't even understand what is happening to them. Why? Because they have not subscribed to the help of God. At the end of this message today, I'm going to give opportunities to everyone. God has spoke to your heart and said, son, daughter, you need to give me your heart. You need to walk in my path. That song said, you don't have to worry, you don't have to be afraid. Many are under the turmoil of fear. They don't know what next, how next. But I pray for everyone here present today, God's grace will be upon you in Jesus' name. Briefly, this service, we'll just touch one, two, three things and uh, we'll be out on our exams. We've been talking about wisdom. What wisdom is this? We mentioned last week in the introduction that there is earthly wisdom, sensual wisdom, devilish wisdom, divine wisdom. Many of us, like in the university here, are intellectual giants. But like I often say, no matter your intellectual prowess, you need the spiritual prowess and the help of God to make advancement. And that's why we have been looking at the subject of wisdom. Wisdom has unlimited capacity to level all challenges, create solutions, and engender supernatural exploit, confers dominion over destruction and death. Wisdom. Can somebody say the wisdom of God? Say it one more time, the wisdom of God. For everyone writing exam today, the wisdom of God will be available to you. Amen. Like you heard one of the students say, they revise, they check the things, and everything they have done is just the spirit of God. And some people don't have that kind of testimony. They are struggling every day. They are putting efforts like giants or like elephants, and their result is coming out like an ant. Why? Because it is God that makes us to do valiantly. One student met me and was saying, ah, I, you talked about Holy Ghost Expo. I want that Holy Ghost Expo. <laughs> and I said, there's nothing like that. You see, when I say Holy Ghost Expo, I'm just making an illustration to say the spirit of God. And because some of you can get that one wrong now. Go and say, Holy Ghost, give me Expo, give me Expo, give me Expo. Boy, you will fail. Because there's nothing like that. The Spirit of God will lead you, will teach you. He said, There's an anointing in you that teaches you. So when it gets to a point, the Holy Spirit just puts a nudging in your heart. How many have had the nudging of the Holy Spirit to go and check something? And when they checked it, it came out in exam. Can I see someone there? Good. That's the Spirit of God. That's the expo. He just tells you, Son, go and check this thing. Some people have checked it just at the verge of exam, and that's it. The Holy Spirit is there. is our very present help in the time of need. 
Now, there's a little aspect that we want to look at today, which has to do with the subject of meditation. Remember, the topic has been, what wisdom is this? And this, in this part two, we are looking at the subject of meditation. The subject of meditation. The art, what is meditation? Meditation is the art of pondering through scriptures in search of answers to the bugging questions of life. Thinking through scriptures to answer the bugging questions of life. My Bible tells me in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. How many wants to have good success here? So, meditation. Pondering through scriptures. Finding solutions to the bugging questions of life. And there are many people who have many questions. Privileged to be the chaplain. Oh, we have a lot of students that have a lot of questions. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. A lot of things bugging their minds. But if only you will find access to the word of God. And think upon these things. That's why I said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Can me tell your neighbor, day and night. Yeah. And that's what it is. Day and night. Thinking through. Squeezing it through. Now, as you cut a piece of orange, the juice is embedded in the rough edges out there. Until you squeeze out the juice... Before you can have access to it. And we require that in the word of God to have understanding. Because the Bible says good understanding procures favor. We must understand what we do, why we do what we do. So that the help of God shall be available to us. What is meditation? It is thinking through scriptures and finding solutions to our challenges. And then Psalm 119 and in verse 97 and 98 say, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. And verse 98, he said, Though through thy commandments have made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Wiser. Wiser. God expects that every day you should be wiser. God expects that every day you should be making progress. Why? Because you have meditated on, God, on God's word. Now, let me say this here. When you walk in meditation, it makes you, makes you to understand the value you need to place on the issues of life. Values. Some people don't have values for the things of God. They don't have value for the presence of God. Some don't even have value for education. Can you imagine if somebody says now at, that his education is not, doesn't have a value? That's the greatest foolishness in this world. Who thinks Covenant University is not anything? That's the greatest foolishness in this world. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. You may finish architecture and not do anything with architecture. You may read petroleum engineering and you want to become a fashion designer. But do you know what? When you understand the place of God's wisdom, you will know that everything that you have acquired is to make you approach the things of life more calculatedly. That's why I love this Covenant University, EDS. They are teaching you entrepreneurship. They are teaching you this. 
with all this in this university, you are not permitted to fail. Can I hear an amen there? Some of us didn't have that privilege. But you need to value. Some people don't value name. A good name is better than silver or gold. So you must not engage in anything that destroys your name. Your name. A good name. A good name. That's wisdom. So the wisdom of God tells you that your name is more valuable than any money. You don't have a price tag. That's wisdom. God's servant said, wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. Knowing where to go and going there. You know the right thing to do. You know the value system of life. Wisdom. Because you have meditated on God's word. I made this prescription to Ross some time back. And I said, one proverb a day gives you access to the wisdom of God. When you read one proverb a day, there are too many things to learn there. When you think upon these things. He said, prepare thy works without. He said, afterward, build your house. So which means there are certain things you must give attention to first. By the time a young man is more interested in money now in the university, he's getting a wrong procedure concerning his life. You should be interested in your education first. Then after now, you can bolt out to anything. I remember, thank God for my father of blessed memory, I would have driven off. I had the opportunity many years ago to have been sent out of the country, but my father said one word, you will finish your university in my frontier. After that, anywhere you like, you can go. Because there are many who have gone that way and they have destroyed destiny. They got to America. Hey, hi, guy. How are you doing? <laughs> Boy, I'm here in New York. Stupid. <laughs> and he doesn't have any education. He's sagging his trousers, turning his cap behind. Just, he's just following the Joneses. Life become destroyed. Wisdom. I remember there were some individuals in our school days who wanted to jump out of school to go and follow uh, the souls are perishing. Are the souls not still perishing now? They are still there. There was one who we had in our district who jumped out of school. He's nowhere today now. We can't find him anywhere. Can't find him anywhere. One of the great ministers of God who, let me say, um, our father, Pastor Fra our baby, Bishop Francis Wale, okay, almost jumped out of UI because of, because of uh, evangelism. The whole world is perishing, so let's leave engineering and just go out to the world. Everybody prayed him to sit down until he finishes engineering. Anywhere that he can go, he wants to go. Today, he's still ministering to the world there. Come and tell somebody wisdom. Many people take foolish steps in life. And they don't know until when you begin to meditate in God's word. You begin to note how, so wisdom is not just quoting scriptures. There are many people who quote scriptures and don't understand scriptures. Because they don't think on scriptures. Scripture says a man in honor that nowhere did not is like a beast that perished. So when a man is in honor and don't even give regard to that honor, that is his foolish man. Most of you are in Covenant University today. Okay, look at, excuse me. Maybe did you listen to the testimony that the, that boy gave or he left there? A parent is paying the bills for his child to be in Covenant University, but he's still entering bus. Did you hear it at all? That my father came down from bus. The money that they have used to keep you in this school can buy three cars. Like I, I made illustration. Every Covenant University student spent an average of one million every year. The school fees plus, plus uh, uh, upkeeps. One million every year. Every parent puts in one million for you. And somebody is here and is what? I saw some parents, they came to me sometimes. I look at the daddy and I said, This young man, you are 22 in engineering, and your father still has to come to Ibadan from Ibadan to come and monitor you. You are a disgrace. 
Go to Uniben there. Asu is on strike now. Some schools are in second semester of, of this last session. Covenant University is finishing first semester. Some schools are in first semester of last session. Understanding. Some schools are in first semester of last session. Some schools just finished second semester of last session. Covenant University has finished. It's just everything here. Bru, 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 bru. You are finished. Bru, 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 you are finished. Then somebody will be here. They are investing. You think that man that entered boss doesn't know what to do? He values what? It is wisdom that makes him to value education. So he chose to wear a torn shoe, a torn cloth, and make sure he gives the best to that child. Now listen to me. Any child that is here who desecrates the investment of his parents upon your life, good luck. Wisdom demands that you do rightly. I keep saying it here. It's 400 minutes to church here. You walk to church. Light doesn't break here. Just have extra semester first and go to outside of this place. You will know that khaki is not leather. Foolishness. Foolishness. And it's because of lack of meditation. You don't have to be a big boy. You don't have to be. You need to understand God's word. And do what is right. Utilize every benefit that God has given you. That's wisdom. So I'm zeroing down wisdom to thinking on God's word. Now listen. Proverbs and in chapter 24 verse 3. It said every enterprise. That's the Living Bible Translation. Says every enterprise is built by wise planning. Becomes strong through common sense. And profits wonderfully by keeping our breast with facts. And King James said, true wisdom is a house built, understanding, establish it, knowledge, fills it with good and precious things. So listen to me, every enterprise is built by wise planning. So somebody who wants to go into business tomorrow, sits down and plan well. And before he goes into it, and know what is priority now. First priority is my education. Second priority is to get a job. Next priority is to get a capital to start. You know just what step to take. Not juggling everything together and somebody is saying, okay, uh, the business I'm doing out there is more fruitful than my education. Ah, ah, has signed in for, for, for. <laughs> oh. I pray that no one will walk foolishly here. Did I hear a believing amen there? Now, you know why I'm saying this? Many are hearing these things. They will stand against you on the day of judgment. As you are hearing, they are coming out from here. But you know what? You either learn from the precept of what we are telling you, or you will learn from your experience, which is very, very costly. Very, very costly. Because some people just don't know what they need to do. Now, are you aware? Let me ask architect student, architecture student. Architecture without a master's degree in architecture, your degree is useless. Am I in the house? Am I correct? Why? Because you cannot be admitted into the, into the guild of architects without a master's degree. Now, you will end up basically as a draftsman. Am I correct? You will be an architect with first degree as a draftman because you will never be able to sign any architectural drawing. Am I correct? So, someone who is in university now finished first degree and he says, Oh, I can use AutoCAD, auto design, and I'm so full. And they just give him one small money of 50,000, give him another money of 100,000, and he said, No, no, forget masters, forget masters, I will come back, I will come back. I advised somebody 16 years ago as regards going for masters. Ah, no, he was making money, beer, perfume, and all that. I was begging him. <laughs> he saw money and his eyes was, was on it. I begged him, oh boy, go and do master. Yeah, no, no, I will do professional exam. I'm aware now that those HND and degrees that have not done masters, they were supposed to do professional exams to be qualified. Many of them are not qualified. The same person after 16 years is going back to the same advice. I called him one time and I said, boy, how are you? So how about this profession? I said, ah, 
He said, well, my colleagues have gone back to school now. I think I will come and go back to school. I said, I said, 16 years ago, you have the opportunity to take that step that will conclude everything about your life. Skillful, talented, but foolishness will not make him do what is first. Foolishness will not make him do what is first. So listen to me. I'm telling you this morning. So some of you must know what you must do first in your life. Somebody is saying, eh, I love this boy. Love. Ibo Lotiri. Love. Which love are you talking of now? The only people I can permit to talk about relationship is final year student. If you are not in final year student, nonsense. Uh, don't shout because your eyes may, may be under, uh, understanding. Hello? Because what are you doing? Age 20. Priority. So by the time one chemistry of your body is jiving up uh, te- temperature, you better tell your body to behave. Did I hear an amen there? Yeah. Not to drive your destiny off. Why do I say final year? From my precepts, anyone you have been around five years and four years, your wife comes from your environment. Quiet and don't make noise. I know you are interested in such a thing. Especially when Chaplin is saying it. But listen to me. If I catch you any waka nonsense, they will send you out of this place. Praise the Lord. Now, in your final year, by the help of the Spirit of God, Lord, what must I do? And God says, this is the person. Psst, quiet. And you follow in that path. I have discovered at least from my experience, every of the relationships that were God's foundation in my school days, they are still enduring marriages today. Some of them had to wait for children for 19 years and cross-cultural marriage that didn't break. Why? Because those marriages were founded on the word of God, not on frivolities. I pray that may the wisdom of God be available to you. So my submission as we close is this. Think through scriptures. Don't just be hearers of scriptures. Think through scripture. You don't need to know too many scriptures. Just know one that will change your life. And act on that one. Act on that two. Act on that three. And you see your life changing. What are the channels of wisdom? You pray. Call unto me and I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things. That thou knowest not. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. A prayer of inquiry will help you to access God's wisdom. You must have a heart for God. And that is quite important. Not only that, a purpose driven meditation. A man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddles with all wisdom. Proverbs 18.1. I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice, may you take wisdom steps. Did I hear an amen there? What do you do to sustain the wisdom? Because you see, the Bible says wisdom is justified by her children. That is by the result. Anyone who foolishly takes steps today will suffer for it. But when you walk with wisdom, doing what you need to do part time, Face what you need to face part time. Do what God requires for you part time. Then you just glide. Everything looks easy for you. But those who are not doing anything, they are just, ah, okay, anything that comes, whenever, any life, eh, what if, no. You are most privileged students of Covenant University. Don't bang the privileges God is giving you on this ground. May the Lord give you wisdom in Jesus' name. Recognize your need for divine wisdom and consistently pray for it. Is it. Does anyone lack wisdom? Let him ask. I was going to get married. I learned from observation. If I tell you what I've observed in university every time I come, I go around and I just observe. 
I don't need to be taught many things. I observe forms, procedures, what makes this place tick. What makes it go? Observation. Learn. And where you don't know what to learn, ask people who have gone ahead of you. Excuse me, sir. You go to meet your lecturer. Sir, what does it take to... Oh, I remember joining ministry. Yesterday, maybe 16 years, I came into ministry as a, as a pastor. While I, before I got ordained in, uh, in Kaduna, I went, met Pastor Jeme. He was then associate pastor to God's servant, Bishop Abiyo. And I sat down before him and I said, Sir, what does it take to excel in ministry. I went to the then financial controller in Kaduna and I sat before him. What does it take to excel in ministry? And as those two people were talking, I was writing. Those two people were talking, I was writing. I can remember that those things they told me 16 years ago, every instruction that I've followed have made my life and ministry make progress. There were men ahead of me, and I had to learn something from them. I don't go listening, I go writing. Oftentimes when God's servant is around us and is talking, my pencil is always working, my biro is always working. Because he's sharing his heart. He's sharing the secret. The secret of men are in their stories. But there are quite a number of people who are not learning anything from anybody. Who are not taking a glean at what it is. Who are not making progress of what they need to do. All is that I have time. I have time. I have time. Well, it's over to you. You have been looking that you have time. You are leaving Covenant University now with a third class. What a shame. What a shame. Like I told you, anybody who leaves this Covenant University with a third class, you are a shame to yourself and your parents. The investment over your life is too much than to waste it on that platform. What don't you have? Just because you didn't deal with wisdom. Hey, I'm seeing 100 level, you play. And 200 level, I'm still trying to corner myself, you play. 300 level, hey, okay, 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 okay. Let me now get serious. Carryovers are too much there. Burdened with it. And at the end of the day, you are just making a passerby. But well, it's over to you. A word is enough for the wise. This morning is over to you. Connect to Jesus. Some of you are just walking in foolishness. Direct one. They say what a child cannot see standing up. An elder can see he's sitting down. Listen to the people that have gone ahead of you. Someone said, a wise man said, we can't claim to have seen further except climbing on the shoulders of them that have gone before us. Rise up on your feet. Let me tell your neighbor words of wisdom. Tell somebody words of wisdom.